Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Fisk31, and this is going to be the third part of the Telescore tutorial for day one release. Um, the other two videos will be linked in the description below, as well as the Discord invite link. The first video was about timers and how to open up the software for the first time. The second video was about the counters, as well as showing off the cool thing you are capable of doing if you are able to do it properly. And this video is going to show off uh, how you could do things like the background image like I showed off in the last video. If you have any questions, join the Discord below. There will hopefully be a better tutorial in the near future. I might re-record this to be shorter and more easier to understand. But for now, just because I'm short on time, I'm trying to one-shot this as quick as possible. But for this video, we're going to show off how to do the background image. So for now, you click on the background on a new, vid uh, new layer. Uh, and you have the general properties for the layer here for the background. So what you have for the properties here is you can actually change the color if you want to. You can set it to green if you want, if you want, which is pretty cool. Um, you can have it so it pops out on start, which basically what this does is when you click on that, it just pops it out like this every time. Um, there is a reason why you would want to use this. Basically, you would want to use something like that if um, you're going to want to use it as a uh, window capture for OBS. Um, I'll actually probably make a part four explaining how to do that. But for now, I actually am still trying to figure that out properly. Um, but for now, let's just show off how to do the background image. So for now, uh, there is a background image thing right here. And you're going to want to click on the three dots right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up File Explorer. And it is going to be um, something like this. So. You go to something like this right here. Uh, you can scroll for whatever file you want. So let's go to my file right here, which is something I made in paint.net. I'll actually show it off real quick what I did in paint.net. Um, actually, that is not what I meant to do. So let's add that in actually as a PNG. Uh, don't add in any unsupported fi uh, files. I would recommend PNG. I'm not sure what else is supported. I think JPEG is also supported. But this is show off what I actually made real quick. I actually did make, um, I did make a paint.net file. And this is what I made in paint.net. All I did though was just remove the uh, text and just import this in as a PNG, which is currently what you see right here. And now what you're probably wondering is, well, how do you get the text in? Well, that's pretty easy. You guys already saw the last two videos, hopefully. If you haven't, go to the description below. And what you could do is just click and drag these components on top with the connections on a different tab if you want. So there's a tab feature you could do here. So if you click Add Tab and Remove Tab, if you remove the tab, it removes the tab you are currently uh, selected on. So you could have all your buttons here if you wanted to. But for now, let's just stay with one tab. Um, Basically, what you could do now here is uh, you click and drag all the components you want. So point display would be representing the jersey number. Time display is for time, obviously. I'm just going to rush this example. I'm not going to make it actually functioning because I already have it made. Um, basically, click and drag everything you want. And now you might be wondering, well, this looks terrible. Why are you doing it like this? And the reason for that is when you click on each thing, you could resize it. So we'll make this like, I don't know, 150 by 90. You could change the font. So we'll make this the font that's dedicated for this scoreboard uh, format I made. I made this on a different website. I think it was Fontstruct I made this on. Yeah, I believe it was Fontstruct I made this font. Really good site for making fonts. Um, and then you could change the font size. There is an auto font size. It's a little confusing to explain. Um, you can go to the Discord for more information on that because I'm still pretty confused on that as well. But basically, when you go to auto font size and you go to the pop out tab, it's going to be out of position and it's not going to be looking proper. So that's the whole point of auto font size. But then you have to use the width and height instead of the font. So just to avoid confusion for now, uh, we just won't mention that for now. Um, but basically, you resize the font, the the uh, overall look of it to how you want. And then there is a setting for each component known as 
transparent background. So when you click this, there will be a check mark enabled. And then what do you know? There's no background behind the component like you see on the other ones. And let's change the font to what it's dedicated to be. Change the font size. We'll make it like, I don't know, 120. Uh, because it's cut off, we have to make the pixel size bigger. So we'll make this like, uh, we'll make it like 300 by 100 and 10. And then you can just click and drag this. It's not perfect, but it's just to serve as an example. We'll click this one next. Get rid of the transparent background. What do you know? It's right there. You can do the same thing here. Transparent background. And that's basically how you do the uh, Telescore background format, which is pretty cool. Um, this is more of a in-person scoreboard example. Uh, so let me actually just open up my actual one instead. So you actually see how it's supposed to look like. Um, we'll go into editor mode. So this is how it looks like right now. You can actually go to view mode and then it won't click and drag it. It just serves as a thing. Um, and obviously it's functioning the way it is. So once you figure out all the connections and you basically figure out the font size for everything and you click and drag it to the proper position, well, this is how it could look. And then you can get this into something like OBS. And just to show a quick example on how to get it into OBS, this is where the pop out tab comes in. You click on pop out tab, click on this, you full screen it. Then let's open up, uh, I'll drag in my OBS here. And now you might be wondering, uh, how do you actually get it in? Well, just to show you, uh, we have a window capture here. You go to properties. I have a window called Telescore scoreboard view. That is what the Telescore uh, tab is called. So let's exit this real quick. I have it named as scoreboard view. You could change the component name right here. Let's like scoreboard test if you wanted to. That's what it's known as. So it's a window known as scoreboard test. It's a pop out tab. Now it's its own window. You go to OBS, you select uh, basically what it's known as. And then you say, uh, actually I got to refresh it now. Properties, scoreboard test, capture method, window title must match exactly. And this means it has to be the exact same name. Boom, we'll turn it on. I already cropped it from earlier, but just to show you, I didn't crop it from earlier. It's like that, but then you crop it with OBS and there you go. You got it on OBS now. And that's basically all there is really to do uh, to explain how that works at least. Um, it can be pretty confusing. So um, it's still something I am testing out myself, but this just shows you what you are capable of doing if you do it right. You can get all of this onto OBS, excluding all the unnecessary background. And just in case you might be wondering, oh, but you have to open up the pop-out tab every time like this to open it. Well, no, you don't. There is actually a setting right here called pop-out on start. So when you have it checkmarked, let's actually exit out of this real quick. I'll actually discard it. And we'll reopen up Telescore. Uh, remember, you have to open it like this. Don't search for it. Open that up. We'll open the auto size format and it's already in the windowed format automatically. You just got to full screen it. Let me go back to uh, OBS. Since I didn't save it, I actually have to uh, fix it back to scoreboard view. Okay. Boom. There you go. You got it perfectly just the way it's supposed to be. It's cropped. It looks good. And now every time you open it up and you full screen the window for this, it is going to automatically show up as your source, just the way you want it to look without having all this unnecessary background. Um, hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, go to the Discord link below. Um, there are still some complicated matters to explain that I may or may not explain in another video. I might just show you on Discord or the creator might be uh, better at explaining, but basically pop out mode, basically make it so when you pop it out, um, the text is actually in an incorrect position. That's why you gotta check mark the auto font size. By default, it's actually disabled. So let's show you right here. I have auto font size disabled. So now when I do uh, pop out tab, um, it's actually gonna get moved. And that might be very annoying because this looks different 
to what it should look like. So let's go back to this one, click um, auto font size, and go to pop out tab. Well, there you go, it's back in the position it should be in. Um, actually, wait. Yeah, there we go. And uh, yeah, that's basically all it is. I think I really have to show in this video. Um, when you do use the pop out feature though, just know that you are not gonna be able to change the font size because it's automatically changing the font size based on the uh, highlight box here. So rather than changing the font, you're just gonna change the width of the box so it actually fits properly. Again, this is only going to matter if you are gonna use the pop out tab. You do not have to use the pop out tab. Um, but it is strongly recommended if you want to make it as seamless as possible. The only other way you can get this onto OBS is if you use text files. So show this example. We'll do text. You can do whatever font you want. You do read from file. You browse. You go to the... Um... Yeah, you go to here. You go to the Telescore um, output. And then you just choose uh, whatever it is. You just choose, I don't know, point display, whatever. And then it just displays it as a text if it is functioning. I'm actually not sure which one this is, though. So let's try adding in some values real quick and see if that does anything. Yeah, four. So which one is that? It is the... It is the, the home the home one right here. So every time I hit plus here, it is now the text format for this right here. The only disadvantage is the time is not going to be very good uh, with this format because OBS doesn't update uh, immediately. So that's the downside with text files, which is why we recommend using the window capture format because it makes it way easier to work with this. Uh, sorry this video was a little long and a little uh, gibberish from time to time, but hopefully uh, this is able to help you understand. Um, and if you're not able to understand, uh, please let me know in the comments or in the Discord, which will be linked in the video description below. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the Discord because that is where I'm mainly active. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and I will probably make a better tutorial in the near future. But for now... Best of luck on the day one update for Telescore, the brand new free scoreboard software for everyone to use for sports and esports.